So in this lesson, we're going to be creating and using Unreal's render targets to store the result of a material shader inside a texture. Let's create a folder called damage. And inside of that, we'll create a new asset of which the type is render target. I'll call this asset RT underscore canvas example, where the RT is a prefix meaning render target. And I'll double click the asset and that's gonna open the render target editor window. And here we can see that we have a blank texture that has the option to display the four RGB and alpha channels, and also has some parameters in the details panel to allow us to change the resolution of this texture and the pixel format that will affect how many color channels it has, as well as what I call the storage size for now. And I'll change this to 1024 pixels wide and 1024 pixels high. And keeping it square simplifies matters for when we want to sample the pixels from this texture later on. Now we want to store some data into this texture. One way to demonstrate this is to use the scene capture 2D actor. And let's go to the modes panel and in the filter type scene and you should see the scene capture 2D actor in the list. So drag it into the scene and position it somewhere above the floor. This is basically a camera that can capture what it sees and store that image into a texture. If we scroll down in the details panel, we'll reach the section where we can specify which render target we want to use with this parameter, which is the texture target parameter. So I drag the asset from the content browser over to the slot on the scene capture. And already you can see a preview in the thumbnail of what the camera is capturing into the texture. Let's make a bit more room here in the viewport and we don't need this modes panel anymore. So I'll close it. And let's go back into the render texture editor. And by default, you'll see this texture pattern, which might make you think that it's not working. But all that's happening though, is the alpha, which is zero by default, is causing the texture to be transparent. We can go and switch off the display of the alpha in the preview window. And now we'll see the result of the scene capture, which is stored in this texture. If I arrange the editor window and the main window side by side, you can see as I move the camera, the texture is being updated live as it's being moved. Now we can see what happens when we change the texture resolution, which if I set it to 256 by 256, then it does what you expect. The format can also be changed to be of type R16F, which means that it will only store one channel, which is why it's R for the red channel, and only use 16 bits, which is half the usual 32-bit floating point storage per pixel. It means that the texture will take up less space on the graphics card memory, but it has to sacrifice some accuracy to be able to do that. There are 8-bit formats, as well as the usual 32-bit formats, and even a full RGBA 16 bits format for red, green, blue, and alpha channels. We don't actually need the scene capture actor as we're just using it for demonstration purposes. So let's just delete that. You'll notice though, that the texture is still storing the data it had last written into it. This won't change until something else modifies it or it gets reinitialized by something like changing its resolution. I'm going to change this texture to use R16F because for this module, we only need to store one channel's worth of data. And we'll try 16 bits first to see if it's accurate enough for our purposes. Let's save that. And now instead of using a scene capture 2D to write an image into the texture, we'll use a material to specify what pixels get drawn into the render target texture. This is going to be our brush texture. So let's name it accordingly. And I like to prefix materials with a MT underscore prefix as a naming convention, but that's totally up to you. When using a material to draw to a texture, only the emissive colors slot determines what the final values of the pixels are, which end up in the texture. So to make it clear, that's what we're doing. I'll change the shading model to unlit. No lighting information makes its way into the final texture anyway. So there's no reason to use a lighting model. Let's use the plain preview mesh and swing around to look at the preview of the material. The plane actually visualizes what the final texture will look like. Any material that gets drawn to a render target actually acts as if it was a square region with UVs that go from zero to one in both the U and V directions. So we can use those for creative effect. Let's draw something into our texture and I'll create a noise node, which will generate a pattern for us to place in our texture. 
plug it straight into the emissive slot. And let's get those UV coordinates. And we'll use those as the position that the noise references when generating its pattern. Because the UVs are 2D though, we have to append to the vector with a single float to make it a 3D position that we can sample from. I'm going to change a couple of the settings on the noise node to get it looking a bit better. I'll disable the turbulence setting and change the scale so that what fits into our texture will be something interesting. Also, changing the output min value will change how our texture looks by bringing up some of the values that extended down towards negative 1, and it brings it up into the 0 to 1 range. We only see 0 to 1 in the viewport, so changing that range can make the noise thicker or thinner, or smooth or more contrasty, depending on which part of the range you choose. Now, looking at our texture, it's not immediately clear how we get that noise into the texture, as before it was done for us by just specifying the asset in the scene capture slot. We have to do a bit of extra work to cause this to happen. Thankfully, Unreal ships with quite a nifty feature called Blutilities, which are little blueprints, which instead of running logic in your games when you hit play, can actually have an effect in the editor itself. That allows you to add little tools here and there into your workflow. They're not enabled by default though, so you have to go into the editor preferences and enable them by searching for blue utility and checking on the little checkbox. Once you've done that, you can create a new asset which is in the blueprint submenu and is of type blue utility. In the menu that pops up asking you to choose the parent class, you'll want to expand the all classes dropdown and pick the global editor utility base. I'll give this a name of blu underscore draw rt for render target. To edit this blueprint, you'll have to use the right click menu and choose edit blueprint. And that will open you up in an editor, which is hopefully familiar to you. But if not, that's okay. The central region is where we'll place our nodes to perform our logic. And the left hand side is where we will define the individual operations that we want to perform as functions. In a blutility, each function actually shows up as a button in the UI, which we can click on to invoke that operation, which is quite handy. So let's create one of these functions by hitting the plus button, and we'll call this one draw to RT. I'll compile and save this, and now if we close the editor window and double click the Blutility asset, instead of opening the editor window, it opens the UI window with the buttons that we can press to perform our own custom logic which, spoiler alert, we're going to draw into a render target. So let's do that. Open up the editor again, and with the right click menu and in our draw RT function, which the button invokes, we will create a draw material to render target node. Hook up the execution pin so that when the button is pushed, the function execution will flow from the purple node to the draw node, and this blue node will get called. We need to tell it what texture we want to draw into with this drop down menu on the node, and also what material we want to use to do the drawing, which in this case will be our brush material. So compile and save, and I'll close all the windows. Now, when we reopen the blue utility, we can press the draw RT button, and if we check over on our texture, we should see the noise. But we didn't save the brush material, so let's save that and rerun our draw function. And now we can see that the texture has been drawn. We can turn off the blue and green toggles in the preview to see the texture as a grayscale one. Now we won't actually be using the blue utility in the rest of this module, but I thought it was something cool to show while showing which blueprint nodes are responsible for causing the drawing. So in the next video, we'll take a look at how we can clear the contents of a texture after we have drawn something into it. So I'll see you then.